Welcome everybody. We'll be discussing today the profile FX module and how to file SIPs. Just wanted to mention that uh, you can ask questions throughout in the Q&A area. We have people here who will answer questions throughout. And uh, just want to also mention that in about a week or so, registered participants of this webinar will receive a copy of this webinar and their CPD, their continuing education credit certificate. So that'll that'll come to you in the same email you used to register. And it'll be about a week or so. I hope you enjoy. And this web, webinar will start momentarily. Thank you for joining this Intuit Profile FX module webinar. Preparation of slips. We'll do the initial setup in profile. Uh, how you create slips, uh, the use of the auditor in the FX module, printing slips, electronic filing slips, and then amending and canceling slips. Uh, we'll cover both the federal side and the Quebec side of the preparation and filing. So to start off, let's have a look at setting up profile for electronic slip filing. Uh, there's some initial steps that you have to complete to be able to file slips, and this will apply to all slips that you file. Let's go have a look at profile. I'm in profile now, I'm looking at a 2021 FX file, but let's look at the initial setup. Uh, that's done in e-file options. And there's a T3 FX section here. Uh, there's an XML directory here, and what I did was create a uh, directory. This is for batch filing. So I put a directory here that I will use for batch filing. Uh, you can leave this blank if you're just filing one at a time. And then there's contact information that I filled out here in this sample example. Transmitter, there's identification that has to be filled out. And then there's the federal section. The transmitter number is a number that goes in every file. So it identifies who's transmitting the file. So we build an XML, send it to CRA. In that XML will be the transmitter number. The account number is a business number. And then the web access code is the code that is assigned to the, the business number. So the account number here and the web access code have to be related. So CRA will issue a web access code for the business number and they can be entered there. The transmitter number is also issued by CRA. Uh, in their documentation, it does say that there's you can use a generic. It's either MM and then six zeros or MM and six fives. They only say to use that if you're only filing one FX file. If you're going to be filing a lot of FX files, you have to apply for a transmitter number. Now this will this account number and web access code is what's required to log into and access the XML server at CRA. So I can enter my information here, like for an accountant's information, and it'll populate automatically on the CRA XML server login screen. Or I can leave this blank and then have to fill it in when I log onto the server. I would leave it blank if I'm just filing individual FX files and I have the web access code for every file I'm sending. If I look down below here, there's a Quebec transmitter number. This is um, a little bit different. It's kind of confusing because we have a transmitter number that goes in the file. It doesn't help you log on to the server. But for Quebec, the transmitter number is the number that allows you to file the slips. So Ministry of Revenue Quebec 
will issue the Quebec transmitter number. So that you apply for to the Ministry of Revenue Quebec. Contact information, that's the same as what we looked at above. E-file internet, um, this is here because it's for T3 filing. It is by e-file now. So it doesn't relate to slip filing. And then there's this section that relates to FX for Quebec. Ministry of Revenue Quebec issues slip numbers. So they'll give you a start, a start number and an ending number. So these numbers are issued by Revenue Quebec. Uh, MR69 is not related to slips. And then there's also internet file. So this should all be default. There is no need to do any changes on the screen. And that's the initial setup. With the setup completed, we can start creating slips. Uh, we just set up once and then we can go about creating FX files and creating slips. Let's have a look at profile. I have a FX file already completed. Um, you can use file new, create it to create a new FX file or you can use the carry forward. Uh, just to save time, I've got a file created here. What I have is um, filled out all the information. So I need the tax year, uh, the identification number of the filing corp. This information needs to be completed. Completed the uh, signing officer, contact person, location of books. So there's quite a, a lot of information to start off here. Uh, we also need the filing section here completed. If I look down below, there's a couple of things here. There's more slip information. So if I'm filing a T4 slip or RL slip, I can see what the default rates are going to be used. Once the info is completed, I can just go to Form Explorer and type in the type of slip I want to complete. So I'll look at T4, but you can use T5, you know, all the various slips. So I've got completed a T4 details here. Um, what you need to do is just complete all the information for the person you're completing this particular slip for. And then you put in the numbers that are recorded at the end of the year. So once things are rolled up in the bookkeeping side of it, you can just enter what the employment was for the year, what the CPP contributions, et cetera, were for the year, and any other entries that you need. There's also a drop down here. And if there's other box numbers you need to make an entry for, you can make them based on the entries here. And then I can create other slips. So I can scroll across and I can create number two, three. And if I create three, then it'll give me the option to create four, etc. You can create as many slips as you need. So that's where you enter the information for the T4 slip. If I look here in Form Explorer, I can type in T4 slip. And I can see what the actual slip would look like. Uh, we can see this is all in green, so I can make entries on the actual slip. All the entries come for the from the T4 details. I'll point out a couple of other things for the T4s. I can see I've got now this file. I've changed something. It says CPP has been adjusted. There is insufficient to absorb the increase. So some people have this warning message and they don't want it. So what I can show you is another screen in profile. There's the T4 adjustment. And what I can see here is that I have it set for CPP to adjust to uh, based on the number of pensionable periods. If I don't want adjustments, I can just click no. I can see now that that's uh, an override. So 
go to options module and I can see the different options I have here. So I can change this now CPP adjustments to no and then there'll be no adjustments. So I go back to the details and the warning's gone. So there's a couple options here, a couple of places where you can look to see where you can make adjustments. I looked at the T4 adjustment and then the default settings are set in options module. And then you can set it to the year and you can look at the options for the FX. A couple other screens available for T4 filers is there's an employee, T4 employee. This is a, a list of the employees and some people find this helpful. There's also a T4 reconcile and some users like to use this. So that's just T4 details to make the entries and there's some other screens available. Entry for slips like a T5, T5 is also very commonly filed from profile. Uh, the procedure is the same, you complete info, the T5 details, and then we move on to the audit messages. So how can the auditor help us in FX module? Well, I can see there's a warning here, but let's look at what happens if I try and file these slips now. Uh, that's all I have to do. I do the info, the T4 details, and I'm ready to file, uh, I think. But if I go to the transmit box, I see there's these MM errors, and I cannot transmit any slip with a yes in the mm error column uh, just as a side comment here in this box are the slips that can be filed federally so to cra okay so i can't file this slip because i've got an error if i click on the line there's no next box i have to cancel and go back to the auditor so same as always we go to auditor show auditor and we see this mm error t4 details number two employee sin is missing uh, the sin number is a required field so i can try and get the social insurance number and enter it and then that warning goes away or i can consult the cra t4 guide uh, in the past, it's said to just enter zeros if you don't have the SIN, but having the SIN is an uh, important piece of information that CRA requires. So I would look at the guide before just going ahead and entering zeros. Just confirm what CRA says in their latest guide, and then their other commentary about requiring a SIN number. So there we go. We got the audit message cleared it's no audit messages so just like in a t1 or t2 the auditor lets you know entries that are or lack of entries that are going to cause a problem filing the return we have completed the info we've completed the slip details and we check for audit messages at this point we're ready to print slips or electronically file the return or both. Uh, let's have a look at uh, printing slips first. I'm back in the file that we completed those two slips in a T4 module. Now, if I go to, if I'm on slip details here, I can go up to the print one icon and it says print one. So I'm up in the toolbars and it says print the current form or i can use f12 if i click on that it brings up the print dialog box and i can select the slip type it'll show who i've completed slips for it'll ask the slip state so whether it's original or amended cancelled or blank and then the copies i want so I can, it's by default, both are all the workers that are have T4s entered. I can, of course, uncheck one. 
and that'll only print the the first one that's checked uh, I, it's usually you just print whichever you need so if it's amended i would just unclick original and click amend it and etc uh, same with here a lot of people don't want all the copies so they can uncheck them maybe they only want to print the client copies or the t4 for the employee and then you can click print so that's a quick way to get to the print slip screen from profile when you're on the details of the slip also if i go to the file menu you can see a couple of things there's print email pdf but for slips we do we can do print slip so that's the dialog box i just showed you from the slip details there's print slip pdf so if i want to create a pdf and if i click on that the box is the same it's just going to print to a pdf go back to file so print slips or print slips pdf there's also down here print setup but for slips there's a print slip setup and then there's different slips i can choose what i want to do here like uh, the options i want to select I said the example, maybe people electronically file, so they're never going to want to print anything except to PDF the slips for the employees. So I can set that up in print slip setup. Then I can go back to file, print slips PDF, and then I can see only copies two and three. So there is a print slip set up um, dialog and you can explore that to see if there's any settings you want to make there and I'll just cancel that if I want to mail all the copies I can do that I can print copy one and then the t4 summary in this case any slip notes so I can select all this if I'm going to be paper filing so there's different options you can do here you can print copies that you need or you can print everything so that you have printed all the copies you need for filing and to sending to employees next we'll look at uh, the electronic filing of slips uh, we'll look at the federal side and uh, let's have a look how we do that from profile when i'm ready to file slips i can go up to the e-file window uh, Transmit RL slips is for transmitting slips to Ministry of Revenue Quebec. So the second one is for transmitting federal slips and the partnership return. So I'll click on this. And we saw this box a little earlier when I was showing the MM error. Now what we see here is that there is no way to progress. Like it says cancel and that's the only option. It says up here that you have to transmit one slip at a time. So what I do is when I decide which slip I want to transmit, I can click on that line and then the next button appears. So once you determine which line to click on, click on it and click, then you can click next. I skipped ahead a little bit. It takes a few moments for a profile to profile to create the XML and now it's created the XML it tells me the T4 XML was created in the location where the file was stored and it brings me to this login box and I can read through all the agreement and click agree and then I get this dialog box so you have to enter the account number business number and then the associated uh, bis web access code when we were looking at e-file options there was a place to put a business number and a web access code and if they were entered in e-file options uh, they will automatically populate if you didn't put a number there then you'll have to enter it here for each company that you're sending an xml for again there's the xml here and unfortunately this is a sample file so this is as far as i can go so i'm back in the 
the FX file. And uh, I'll refer to some references, uh, community articles that have more details on how to file slips uh, near the end. What I will show you though is we'll assume that I file the slip. If I go to properties, it says e-filed. And now this, we didn't e-file anything. So all this is saying is that an XML was built. We know an XML was built, it was not filed. So you can't go here and say, okay, it was filed, e-filed. So I don't have to worry about this anymore. Uh, CRA does give you a screen that says your file was uploaded. That is the only record you have of submitting uh, XML to CRA. I'll also go to the information screen and there is not a place on the info screen with a acceptance number or some confirmation number. Again, there's no uh, number in profile that shows that the CRA received an XML. Some people ask about this file ID and all that is is how, how many times an XML was built from this file. So I built four XMLs. So again it tells me I've built the XMLs but it does not say they were accepted by CRA. So you have to capture the screen at CRA and if you're really not sure, it's important to be sure, so call CRA if you're not 100% sure the slips were filed and find out if they received them. Let's look now at amending and cancelling filed slips. I'm back in the file where we assumed we filed the slips. Now I've got a slip. Let's say I want to adjust this. I've got a slip here and let's say I forgot the tax. So the income tax should have been $500. What I have to do is, I made the changes there, and then I have to go back up to slip type and change it to amend it. And then we have to go to the properties, and this was e-filed. So I have to change that to work in process or ready to file. So I make the changes, change the slip type, make sure I've got a setting where I can send it, then I can go up to transmit and ready to file, and here I can change it to amend it. So this will only send the amended slips and then I can go ahead and follow the, the steps through, just like fi filing the original. Let's say it's an amend, uh, uh, canceled slip, so what I do is I put this as cancelled and I leave all the numbers here. Uh, some people will take all the numbers out but that's a blank slip and you can't file a blank slip. So you just mark it as cancelled, leave all the entries that were there on the original slip and then go up to transmit, change it to cancelled and then file as usual. If you have to file a new original slip that you have to add after you e-filed the original slips from this file, you will have to start a new file. So create a new FX file for any additional slips that are original that you have to send and CRA will match up the T4 summaries. Uh, which brings up a good point. Uh, when you file the slips federally, the slips and the summaries go in the XML that is sent to CRA. Let's have a quick look at batch filing slips from the Client Explorer. I'm in Client Explorer now and I've done a filter for FX only, unchecked all the others and then just checked for 2021. We have, if you don't use Client Explorer and you're not sure about how filter uh, we do have articles on Client Explorer and then how to do different maneuvers, procedures in Client Explorer. So I filtered, just filtered out 21 and I got these files. What we can do is check the files we want to send and I can build e-file. So this is a batch e-file. If you remember back in the setup, 
I put a directory for where I want the batch files to be stored, and uh, this is will be this is the procedure we use. And when we build the batch, the XML for the batch will be stored there. I'm going to go to T4, and then I can click original cancel. So I've got two companies. Uh, it can be more than two companies, more than one slip, but they all have to have the same slip. So if I click T4 and T5, both these files have to have a T5 or I'll receive an error. And I get a failed. This one failed because there's no T5 slip. What I'll, I'll just do is, it just shows that uh, you have to be sure what's in, in the file that you're transmitting. So what I can do is build now. I'm just going to select the T4, the originals, and I'll start. So it's built a batch, contains the T4s for the two files, and I can see I've got the upload button at the bottom right there, and we can see it's stored in the file directory that I used in the setup. So, but I can upload it, and this gets us the same login window that we saw for filing individually. And we'll click Agree. So just show you there's this available also uh, for those who use Client Explorer or those who maybe will set up Client Explorer to use this feature. Let's have a look at filing Quebec slips. Many of the steps are similar. Uh, you still do info, details, etc. But let's have a look to see how that works. I'm back in the file that I've been working on throughout this webinar. And let's go over to the info and I'll change the province to Quebec. And you can see it activates Quebec forms. Uh, if we look up in the identification section, there's a Quebec section here and I need this information. I don't have it, but I'll also demonstrate what happens if I don't have it. So if we go to the T4 details now, I'm going to change this to Quebec. So because it's Quebec, I need to create a T4 slip and an RL1. Okay, so what we do is do the federal portion first. So see when I have Quebec and now wants PPIP. Okay, so I've got all the federal entries. And up here, there's a provincial toggle or F5. If I click on the toggle, it takes me over to the RL1 slip screen. And what I can do is enter anything that I might need that is specific to Quebec. One of them that's going to be specific is the tax withheld, so box E of the RL1. The other thing there might be unique to Quebec is the private health services plan. So what I can see here is that most of the numbers pull from the federal side and anything that needs to be added specifically for Quebec will be in black color font, allowing me to make the manual entry there. Okay, so if I go back, I've got both the T4 and the RL1. I've got the RL1, provincial toggle to the T4. If I go back to, I'll skip the auditor for a minute. If I go back to the RL1 and do the print one, you can see that it comes up with the RL1. So I can print the RL1 and I can print the T4. So I can select from the slip type which slip I want to want to print. So printing is similar to just federal except I can make the changes to the slip type for whichever slip I want T4 or RL1. So so far so good there. If I go back up to the transmit RL1 in the e-file menu, I can see I've got a similar box to for, for the federal, and I have an MM error, yes, answer there. So I'll go to the audit, and I can see I've got a lot of warnings here. So this is why these setups are important to do at the beginning and have all the required MRQ information. Uh, I need the slip range. I didn't enter a slip range. Uh, this is kind of unique here. 
what this is, and this is important, so I'll, I'll stress this a little bit. I'll cut, shut the auditor. One of the required questions for slip filing is, are you going to paper file the RL1 slips or internet file? Okay, so if I if I click on RL1 slips inter via internet, I get this warning that I have to mail or use online services to send the RL1 summary. I'll stress this, the RL1 summary, the RL slip summaries do not go with the file. And I'll scroll down to the bottom here. There's information about filing the RL1 summary. Uh, there's penalties if you don't file the RL1 summary. So just to be clear, the RL1 summary is not sent with the RL slips. And there's information on the summary about how to file it. I'll go back to show auditor, indicate method of filing. So there's identification numbers like I, I pointed out on the information screen. That one I can deal with. Okay, and then I've got this warning. I have to mail it or through online services. And there's information about how to do that on the actual RL1 summary. Okay, and then there's another warning that can be dealt with. Just to summarize here, uh, but I need the Quebec information. I need the RL slip range. And I need the MRQ slip transmitter number. And uh, as a difference between federal and Quebec, or federal, the slip summary goes with the XML. For the Quebec side, the summary does not go with the slip filing. And hopefully I haven't mentioned too many times, but there's information on the RL summary, how to submit the RL summary. And the other thing is, if I'm on the federal, let's go to the details. There's this trend, uh, toggle between province and federal. You need a uh, FXQ license to be able to file or create or file or have access to RL slips in FX. So if you just have the FX license, you won't have access to Quebec slips. I was not uh, able to show quite a bit about what you, what the filing to Quebec looks like for slips. So I'm on community now, profile community, and uh, I just typed in FXRL, and there's this article here. I have a really good article here. How to transmit slips for the FX module. So it has setting the credentials, transmitting slips, printing transmission information. Uh, just another thing I'll mention here. I mentioned for federal, there is not a record of the slip being filed federally in profile, but there is for Quebec. So if you click on the actions, you'll get a confirmation number. So like we can see here, this is a great article. If you're filing Quebec slips, there's a lot of information in this article and including troubleshooting. Let's have a quick look at other references uh, that we can find in the profile community and at CRA. I'm back on uh, the profile community and there's this article starting start in FX module and it goes through how to create and it talks about other things didn't have time to cover in this webinar, but uh, including, you know, other slips uh, there, the basically the entries are pretty much the same as we showed in the D4. So there's this article, which is great. 
and then I could just use keywords like FX slip filing and see what I get as a result. So there's an article how to internet file slips. Uh, there's pre and post 21. So the method I showed you was in the 21 module for 2021 and 22 and higher. It'll be this method. And then we went through how to amend slips. So there's more information there. The other thing I want to show is I, I referenced the CRA T4 guide. So if you're wondering if there's uh, an error in profile and why it's there, uh, usually it's because there's a, a CRA requirement or a limitation on a field, or there's a required field that wasn't entered. If you want information, CRA does have a T4 guide. There's a T5 guide, etc., for other slips that you can file from profile to CRA. So there's a T5 guide. So there's useful references that are reasonably accessible. I just put CRA first, and then what I'm looking for, and over here I can just type like start FX, and then I get that article. So there's great references in the profile community and at the CRA. Thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, we saw you can get information at the profile community. Uh, you can get that from profile support at the profile webpage, profile.intuit.ca, or you can get that through the help menu and profile. We have time for a few questions. Hi everybody. I hope hope that uh, webinar was helpful. Uh, it it shows you there's some work you have to do, but the creation and filing of slips is pretty straightforward once you know the process and profile. So I hope that came across. Uh, also wanted to mention, you know, reinforce what I mentioned in the webinar that we have a lot of articles on FX and complete walkthrough of all the steps and what you should see as you're moving along. So that's also very helpful. Uh, we're here though, if there's more questions, you can uh, go ahead and post them in the uh, Q&A section. We can, we can stay and answer a few questions if you have any. I will also just mention, like I said at the beginning, that um, uh, this webinar will be sent to you with your continuation, continuing education credit certificate. Uh, they'll be mailed to people who participated in the or who joined the webinar, and they'll be sent to the same email as you used to register, and that'll be in about a week or so takes a while to get those out to you, but we will get you out a copy of this recording that we just played and also your continuing education certificate.
Okay, it looks like we ran out of questions here. I thank you for all the questions. Really appreciate it. If there's anything we can help you with during these webinars, we're more than happy to help. So we'll end it here. And I'll just mention again that you'll get a copy of this webinar to your email in about a week or so, something like that. And the continuing ed education credit will be sent to you also to your email. Again, thank you very much for joining and I hope you found this useful.